Welcome to LSC, it's sports time. I'm your host, Bob Hintz. Today I have with me Bubba Hooker, who's the new head coach of football over at Bethel High School. Welcome. Glad to be here. Thank well, you. I'm for glad to have you here because you've got a, a history of, of coaching in different places. I think people are going to really enjoy this. But uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in uh, Richmond, Virginia. I was I was born in Richmond, grew up in Richmond. My dad was basketball coach at the University of Richmond, so right. we were we were right there until the ninth grade. Okay, so growing up, you played all the sports. Whatever, or? if it if it involved the ball, we did it. <laughs> My dad was. Uh, Definitely, a, a, as basketball coach, he was a sports person. And right. like I said, if it involved the ball, we did it. But you also ran track. Ran track back in the day, yeah, right. when uh, the times weren't quite as fast as they are now. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was running, you know, 440 was a distance. Now yeah. it's a sprint, so uh, it's altogether different. Uh, but uh, as you're growing up and, and being because your dad was in, around sports and you were around sports, a big influence on your life, I'm assuming. Oh, tremendously. I mean, that's one reason I went into uh, coaching. I saw how much fun he was having. Uh, obviously, winning is more fun than, uh, than losing, but right. it was just an enjoyable thing. And he coached me all through the summer and all. So uh, that's, that was basically my experience, and that's what I wanted to well, do. Well, you know, a lot of guys uh, can't coach their sons. Yeah. I mean, it's it's tough. I don't know that I could have. My my boys went to Kickatan. I was over at Bethel, so yeah. I didn't have that opportunity. But I don't know if I could have. Well, I think I think I was good for him. I, I remember going home crying one day from football practice. We were in the rec league, and uh, I was standing there. I wasn't I wasn't even playing then. The next thing I know, he's got me by my ankles and he's bounced me up and down. And uh, I go home and I cry to my mother, and, and he said, well, "I couldn't do that to anybody else." You, you know, so I'm thinking, "Well, okay." Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't I guess, want I guess I'm, this. I'm his stretch, uh, <laughs> his stress relief. So, you know, that's a good thing, maybe. All right. And then you moved to Williamsburg. Moved to Williamsburg in the ninth grade. Right. Uh, Dad became uh, athletic director at William & Mary, so right. uh, we moved to, to Now, Williamsburg. he spent a lot of time at William & Mary. He was a student at William & Mary. He actually coached at William & Mary. Then he, he left there, and I want to say he, he started uh, some of the sports football, I think, over at Smithfield High School, and he was at Petersburg High School. Uh, before he went to Richmond and all, but yeah, sports is sports is what we've always uh, done. Right. So when you were at uh, Williamsburg, you played at James James, James Blair, Blair High James School. James Blair High School. Yeah, they turned it into a middle school. They had central office, but yeah, played at James Blair High School, football, basketball, and baseball, and we ran track. Back then, you know, everybody did that. It wasn't right. an unusual thing. Small school. We were back in the group two days, right. and uh, everybody did every. All the athletes played But everything. if you were a good athlete, you didn't do just one sport. No, I, yeah. even if you weren't a good athlete, you still didn't do one sport. Right. You just you, you participated in sports. Uh, what was your, your best love? Was football always the most love? Or uh, I always loved football the best. I was probably better in baseball. Uh, okay. Baseball was probably my better sport, particularly in college. But uh, mm -hmm. I always liked the football best. Basketball, Dad told me real quick that I wasn't going to be a really good <laughs> basketball player. He said, because it bothers you when you miss, you know, and I, I would tell him when I was doing pregame warm up, if I missed back then, you, you know, you had your spots where that's where you right. shot from. Right. And if I shoot my shot and then it wasn't going in, it was like I always passed it off. He said, you're never going to be any good. You got to be able to shoot. Right. You got to score. Whether you make it or not, you can't worry about it. Yeah. You just, yeah, yeah just keep right. on shooting. Uh, now, what position did you play in uh, football? Quarterback. Quarterback. Yeah, a lot of pounds ago. <laughs> now, what kind of, what uh, offense did you run back? Do you remember? Yeah, we, we basically ran a full house backfield. George Spalding was the head coach, but we ran a full house backfield, inside, outside, belly. We had a real good fullback. He ended up playing at Virginia Tech, uh, a guy by the name of Rick Pollan, and then Mike Anderson was a halfback. We basically faked to uh, Rick every time and then handed it to uh, Mike or vice versa. Sort of the right. wishbone without the read. Right. I mean, it was old. You know, well, yeah, that, that, well, the, one one wide receiver. So they used to call when I was growing up. We called it the old belly series. Yeah, and you didn't have any reads. You yeah. just kind of. That's basically what it was. Yeah, inside outside belly. So yeah. we ran that and then threw the ball a little bit, play action passes, and uh, one of our halfbacks uh, who's back living in the area, Joe Kenny, he always used to give me a hard time because I'd throw that little flare pass, about an eight-yard pass. He'd run 60 yards and say, Hooker throws 60 TD. <laughs> you uh, threw about a yeah. three-yarder and yeah. he runs yeah. <laughs> we always had We always had fun with that. Right. But quarterback gets too much credit and too much blame. Well, it goes, yeah. hand in hand. goes hand in hand. I, I, you played uh, four years. Were you a starter for the most time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on baseball, what did you play in baseball? I played uh, – 
catcher, and then I tore my knee up my sophomore year in high school, so then I ended up playing third and first outfield. I was fortunate that I could hit, so they always right. found a place for me right. in the uh, in the lineup. So. Okay. All right, and then, then you go to college. Go to college. Uh, it was a hard choice. Um, it really came down between UNC, uh, Virginia Tech, uh, VPI back then. Jerry Claiborne was the head coach. Right. I really liked Coach Claiborne. Uh, he and I remained friends even in the coaching profession until he died. But um, William and Mary was a, uh, sort of a family tradition. Um, I wasn't overly excited about going that. I'd played for my dad, so I knew that pressure that would come along with him right. being the athletic director. Marv Levy was the head coach, and, and Coach Levy, you know, assured us that he wouldn't give me a scholarship just because Dad was the uh, AD. Right. Uh, so well, you earned a scholarship. You got it because you uh, basically, you yeah, because you know, the, as a quarterback, you, your players around you are very important. Absolutely. And uh, that certainly helps. But I think the main, the main reason Coach Levy uh, gave me a scholarship was uh, they had a camp, and I went to his, uh, I went to his camp between my junior and senior year, and I guess the. The leadership and the enthusiasm, some of those intangible things for, for an average athlete can sort of right. put you over the well, top. Yeah, the, the, co the coach is looking for that yeah, kind of sure. uh, that leadership. And we everything. are today. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, tell me about your experience there at William Mary. Well, I think it was uh, I think it was a good experience. We uh, we went to the Tangerine Bowl uh, my senior year. That was with uh, Coach Holtz. He'd come in my junior and senior year. Actually. Um, we um, we won the conference and we went to the Tangerine Bowl. That didn't, Tangerine Bowl didn't work out very well, but um, had some good people. Coach Laycock at William Murray, he he was a teammate. Jim Cavanaugh at Virginia Tech was a teammate. So we had some good some good people that uh, right. were associated with the team. A lot of the a lot of guys have gone into coaching. Some in Virginia, some you know elsewhere. So it was a good experience playing for playing for Coach Levy for two years and Coach Holtz, and obviously both of them have done really yeah, really well. Really. You talk to the kids nowadays; they don't they don't know Coach don't Holtz know other than Doctor Lou. Yeah, <laughs> from the TV. Yeah. Uh, Would you quarterback at Wayne? Yes, mm -hmm. quarterback. Uh, my freshman year, freshmen were not eligible, so I played uh, quarterback and mainly uh, scout team right. duty. And then my sophomore year, I actually played quarterback, wide receiver, and running back, and primarily sat on the bench. So I didn't play until my uh, junior and senior year, right. basically. And that's when uh, Lou got there? That's when he came there, right. and uh, it was sort of spot duty my junior year. Then my senior year, uh, I ended up uh, starting. That was yours? Yeah. Your team? Until I got hurt, then, you know, when... Steve Regan came in, and Steve did an excellent job. Right. So. Now, you graduate, and then you, next thing you know, you're assistant. Well, I, kn I knew I wanted to. Uh, I knew I wanted to coach. And uh, baseball, I, ha I had a chance to uh, play pro baseball. But back in the then, you know, it wasn't the money that it is now. It was a little right. bit different lifestyle. And I knew I wanted to coach, so I figured I might as well get at it because I, you know, the baseball, I just didn't feel that it was going materialize right. that well. And then basketball, I only played basketball the one year at William Murray, but played for a great guy, uh, Sonny Smith, ended up having a good basketball career right. as a coach. But um, Coach Holtz kept me on his staff as a uh, student assistant. Right. I had to go to summer school every summer to get eligible. I'm not sure William Murray was a good academic <laughs> choice for me. But anyway, uh, I, I had to go to summer school every summer, and then Coach Holtz kept me around as a student assistant. And then he got the um, head job at North Carolina, North State, Carolina State, and yeah. he took me down there as a graduate assistant. So, okay. And, that's so, sort of and, and I asked you this before, is he, was he as funny? On, no, uh, <laughs> not, not necessarily. Actually, I have one of the, he always used a, uh, at William Murray anyway, at NC State, he used a medical uh, clipboard, medical chart, and uh, he actually gave him that to me, I think because he stuck it in my leg one time, throwing it at me on the sideline. But he, uh, I don't, none of us players back in the William & Mary day remember him being quite so uh, so humorous. So glib. <laughs> uh, 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 I think, uh, I think he developed that later on as maybe he got higher and his teams got better. Yeah. I, think, I think his one-liners and all that became a little bit more. Uh, humorous. Right now, you left there, and you, is that when you went to Tulane? Or? No, I left. Uh, I Austin P. I left NC State and uh, and went to Austin P. That's where you met your wife. Met my wife at Austin P. Yep, that was in 1972, I believe it was 73 in that in that neighborhood. Right. And then, uh, we didn't. We were dating, and then uh, we actually got engaged, and I left and went to Wichita State. Uh, went out there and then came back and we got married and so our first place living together was in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. At Wichita so State. now, when you're changing all these other schools, you're going to and and it, 
it's because of knowing somebody networking. they have watched you yeah. coach somewhere else yeah. and they say, generally okay. that's how i work it, it's networking obviously yeah. obviously having uh they did that, that wasn't the word back then networking wasn't no, the word no. <laughs> uh, but having you know having coach holtz on your resume and having coach levy on your resume obviously were good things right and, uh, and then the assistant coaches that you met like i worked with an assistant coach at austin p he went to uh wichita state guy by the name of bill baker he's back at tennessee now he was in pro scouting for a long time. He helped me get out there because he knew me and he right. had a relationship with the head coach, uh, Jim Wright, who I didn't know. So, I mean, that's sort of how I worked. And out there, Frank Emanuel, who was a pretty good football player from Warwick High School. Right, right. Uh, Frank got me to, uh, Frank left Wichita State. Then a year later, he got me to Vanderbilt where he left. So, you know, that kind of camaraderie right. and, and networking. And so you, how many different colleges were you? Oh, I, I'd lose count. I know my wife and I, we talked about where we moved 18 or so different times, but wow. we felt like it was generally for a, uh, not necessarily a pay raise, but, you know, to be a coordinator or to be assistant head coach or be a head the coach. experience-wise. Those kind of things, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, they didn't, they didn't give you a pay raise. They just gave you a title. <laughs> so it was a little different. Yeah. Uh, and then you finally end up at, at what was it, Tappahannock? Was that the first? Tappahannock was a was first a, high school. Right. I'd, uh, I'd. Been at Vanderbilt, went uh, went back to Austin P. Then our whole staff moved to Middle Tennessee, and I was reaching the age where I'd set for myself I wanted to be a head coach in college, and an opportunity to be the athletic director and head coach at a junior college down in Alabama came up. So I jumped on that because you always want to know whether or not you can run your own program, right. whether you can be the head coach sitting in the homes recruiting and all that sort of thing. And we, you know, we were successful then. That we lost five games in five years, so we were we had some good players. And um, so Proposition 48 hit with the NCAA where it made it hard for the junior college person to go on to the four-year school. That depending on their grades, they had to graduate. Right. So that was a little different deal. So I took a job at which Fulmer, uh, Philip Fulmer helped me uh, get Philip and I were at Wichita State together. And uh, Philip was the head coach at Tennessee for a while. Philip helped me get the TMI job, and which was a prep school, which at that time was a good deal for somebody who needed a little tweaking athletically and academically. Right. So, then I turned 40 and decided uh, I'm done. You know, I worked at Tennessee that one year and then I said I'm, I'm through with college coaching. I need to spend more time with my own kids and uh, and I want to coach my kids in youth league sports like my dad did. Right. So I decided to uh, get into high school. And well, what got you Tappahannock? Tappahannock yeah. is um, my grandfather, who was actually a judge, he was chairman of the State Corporation Commission in the state of Virginia, knew the, uh, knew the mayor up there. And it was a situation where um, the networking uh, took place and I was able to get that. They had a coaching change and I was able to get that job. Little did I know what I was getting into as far as, <laughs> as, far as high school coaching. I'd always traveled, you know, recruited high schools, right. but really didn't, you know, really didn't know the uh, the ins and outs and all the, the deals that the high school coaches have to uh, have to go through. Coaching in high school is harder than coaching in college. Is that I mean, right? I've told people well, that you know, the lower you go in ability with kids, youth league or whatever, that's where you got to have your best coaches because they're teaching the fundamentals right. and they've got to get the kids to really buy into and love the sport. Well, that's what Mike London, when I had him in there, he says, I said, do you ever think of being a high school coach? He said, oh, Lord, no. He says, they put in too much more time, and it's a lot harder than it is at the college yeah. level. And, and a lot the of, second one that's let yeah, me know And that. a lot of coaches, I mean, they may start in high school, but the teaching drives them out. Right. You know, they just, you know, they're they in love with the coaching, which, I mean, I've been there, done that. And, and the teaching, just the lesson plans and all that just ends up uh, driving. And the kids, you know, some particularly old school, you know, it's, there's a lot of power involved in the coaching part of it. Right. And in the classroom, you don't necessarily have that. Uh, in this day and age, is a little bit different. You know, it's like you know, please be quiet kind of deal, as yeah. opposed to what you used to, <laughs> as opposed to what you used to say uh, to him back in the day. Yeah, a little different. You're right. Yeah. So, but so, I, the Tappahannock was fun. I was there for yeah. for two years, and uh, then where'd you go coach, from there? Got to coach my kids in, uh, okay. in youth league sports, two boys, and actually the girl as well, because uh, I'd started coaching the youth league sports down in Alabama. Um, but from there, I went to uh, Lafayette. I was actually at a PE conference, and um, uh, Betsy Thomas, the athletic director at Lafayette back Betsy. then, yeah. and uh, and Faye Evans, uh, one of the, uh, she actually teaches over at Thomas Nelson Community College now. They uh, were talking to me about you know taking the Lafayette job. I didn't even know it was open kind of deal. I was happy where I was and right. at a little single A school, and um, but then that all evolved and ended up going to uh, Lafayette. Right. Um, did not win was 
but we felt like we were overall successful as far as changing the attitude a little bit. And, right. You know, I still visit with some of those former players, and they well, look back. And that's good. And that's one of the intangibles of oh, sure. coaching. Oh, sure. That's you, what it's you, all about. You develop some relationships yeah. that just go on forever. Yeah. Uh, and then you went into the, oh, was it Ferguson High School? Yeah. Warwick? After after uh, after uh, basically getting relief from the football job at Lafayette, I. I still teach in Williamsburg, um, but I uh, I checked with all the different coaches and, and I was able to work with Coach Raymond at Ferguson. That was the closest that I could get to, and I was um, so I went and worked with Tommy. Was was Brooks over there then? Aaron Aaron was had just left. Okay. And uh, Michael was on the way. Right. And um, but worked there with uh, Coach Raymond, then we all moved to uh, Warwick, Warwick. Yeah. and that was a, that was a good experience. Then um, from there, my youngest son Dorsey. Which is interesting. Dorsey is actually named after uh, Tommy Dorsey. That's my grandfather on my mother's side, the trombone player. Right. Yeah, you're not old enough to remember. Oh, that. I remember Tommy the, and Jimmy both. The, the band <laughs> there, so I, I throw that in there. Yeah, I appreciate the, that. The uh, <clears throat> we we moved over to uh, when he went to Emory and Henry. We wanted to go see him play. I mean, I wasn't going to miss his games. I've right. been with some college coaches who their sons would be graduating, and they say, "I never saw my kid play. I don't know his oh, fans man. and all." And you know, that's just I wouldn't. I, I didn't want to do that, so uh, Danny Dotson at Woodside allowed me to, you know, stop in there when I could. Can. And at that time, my son-in-law was on his staff. He was. We were together at uh, Warwick, and then when I left um, Warwick, uh, Coach Raymond made a little bit of a staff adjustment. So uh, I had to get my son-in-law a job, and uh, Danny was able to help us out right. from that. And then you went with your uh, son-in-law. Son -in -law, I went ex-son-in-law. Yeah, nah, ex-son-in-law. Unfortunately, I went with him to. Uh, Kingatan, and then we got my son, who was graduated from Emory Handy, was teaching out in Grayson County, um, Galax area out there, beautiful part of the world, uh, to come because he, you know, he was coaching. And I said, well, you need to come coach at the best district in the state, in my opinion, there you as go. far as the PD. So we were both at, uh, he got a job teaching at uh, Bethel, where my daughter was already teaching. She was athletic trainer. So you got there. both of your kids, both of my kids were teaching are, at, yeah, at, mm -hmm. at Bethel. Yep. Kristen was the athletic trainer, and then um, she doesn't do that anymore. She had a, a daughter who was born with a stroke at birth, so she uh, gave up the athletic training to be able to spend more time with her daughter, which was a good choice. Right, absolutely. So. Now, uh, you got the the Bethel job. How did because that was when uh, Jeff Nelson got it. Yeah. He brought you in on that's his staff. That's basic. Uh, Dorsey, I think, by being there, he was a little natural lock because you want to have as many coaches in the building as right, possible. Right, absolutely. And when he was at Kingatan, he used to drive his Volkswagen Bug to uh, Kingatan. Then I'd follow him back because he was living with us in Williamsburg, and I'd give him a ride home. And then he'd go down with my daughter at school, so we had a little transportation thing going on. But Jeff. Came in, he took Tracy Parker's place. Right. And then I interviewed with Jeff, and then that was a situation where we ended up getting hired on the staff. So that's right. worked out well. Let me ask you this. Why do you think that this district is so good? I mean, it's a, if you want to win a state championship, you've got to go with somebody on the peninsula. It's well, like. I think it's a situation where the youth league sports are good. I, I think uh, parents take it serious. Um, I think everybody is a little bit different. Some of the some of the kids still see this is athletics is their only way out of the out of the their environment, right? And um, and then some other kids just want to want to compete. But I think the youth I think the youth football, which I can speak to more than the, say the basketball, um, even though you see the basketball all the time with Boo right. Williams and the AAU and all that stuff. But I think the, the competitiveness at an early age to compete and keep it going. And then I think not having middle school sports probably helps this area because eighth graders have to play in the uh, on the high school team. Right. Where, in Williamsburg, the JV. where in Williamsburg, we have middle school sports still. Oh, and I okay. think that's a little, you know, right. it makes it better, but it also probably doesn't give quite as many kids an opportunity to play. Right. So it's, it's a two-edged sword there. Yeah, there it does. I'm going to kind of wrap this up, but I just want you to talk about how you developed your, because you've gone through a lot of different coaches you've yeah. worked with. How did you develop your coaching philosophy and, and, and what you teach the kids now? Basically, from a philosophy standpoint, I, I think it's pretty simple. Treat them the way you want your own kids treated. And if you do that, generally you won't go wrong. Now, you may have parents who disagree with you, but as long as you're doing what you would do for your own kids, that's an important thing. Right. And then, you know, obviously winning makes the world go around. We all want to be successful, but as a football coach, 
we can, I can be successful without necessarily, you know, winning a state championship. Although that is our well, ultimate we, goal. Absolutely, we want to win the state championship, yeah. and we want to work every day to do that. But if I've if I've taken the young men and progressed them as far as character and as far as academics and some of those intangible things, then you know I feel like we've been successful as coaches. That doesn't mean you'll retain the job, right? But at least you can put your head on the pillow at night and and realize that uh, you're doing what old school coaching used to be about you know you can't really say taking boys anymore because that's not a you know that's not a good thing but we we try to take the young men and we progress them and and try to have them mature and do a you know be worthwhile citizens and then from a play standpoint it's just blocking and tackling right and we fundamentals and we can do whatever our kids do best we're not married to a system you know whatever our defensive coordinator may like or our offensive coordinator may not may like that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to do that if our kids can't do it, right? You know, we're going to we're going to be fundamental. You're going to adjust your just whatever our kids can do because that's the right. best way to have success. Right. You know, in the past few years, we've we've thrown the ball more at Bethel, right. and uh, we don't envision being able to throw the ball that well. So we hope to be able to go back and establish maybe a little bit of uh, discipline that uh, they used to have back in Coach Kozlowski's days. Yeah, and then yep. uh, Bowling Shoop, I believe. Yeah, Bowling Shoop was when was, I was there. He was the one that he was the one that established Start, the winning he tradition. He started the whole program and over there. And then Kaz took it over and won three state championships yeah. and three regional championships and six district championships. Yeah. And if we can do that, then you know we've we've been successful on the scoreboard. Uh, and generally speaking, you'll win and helps uh, character and all the rest of those things. Oh, it looked like Bethel's going to come around. Come around. You're going to. Going to go back to uh, the Kozlowski type of winning and that kind of thing. And talk a little bit about your staff, too, before we wrap this yeah, thing we, up. We're going to try to go back to the Kaz. I know uh, uh, Kaz, um, we've got a big sign up says Kaz Field because the parents wanted to name the practice field uh, after him. That sort of got lost in the shuffle, so we brought that back. And Coach Kaz has given us some pictures that we have up in the weight room of Incremides and some of those guys that used wow. to play back in the day. And then um, any of those players that come back, we have them speak to the team because, you know, we've got a tradition. We need to reach back and do it. And right. you know, Jeff did an excellent job of reestablishing the program because it, it has slid a little I bit. I thought he had, and, thought he and, had and done it. And Jeff did an excellent job, job yeah. of reestablishing the, yeah. the program. And we want to, you know, carry that on and, and you know, take it, uh, take it a step further. Coach Cobb spoke to our – football team before we ended up beating Hampton this year and he actually brought in a folder and, and old notes of his game plan and talked about Mike Smith, what he liked to do as far as, you know, working the sideline right. near his bench and 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 everything. And uh, Coach Cos he's coming off a of back surgery. Yeah. He's doing I in fact talked to him the other night. Yeah, he's doing he's doing well. And yeah. um, he uh, got a funny story. He he was gonna discipline Alan Iverson before we played him one time when I was at Lafayette. He says, uh, "Yeah, y'all got y'all got a chance tonight, Coach." I said, "How's that?" He says, "I'm gonna uh, bench Allen." I said, "Good, good." He says, "Yeah, I'm gonna bench you for the first half." I said, "Come on, Cos, bench you for the whole game." <laughs> but we were actually ahead at halftime too, and then he, Allen played, and it was right. you know, we were done. Well, but you also, Coach Cos benched him. But he let him start a defense. Yeah. <laughs> Just let him start yeah. offense in one of the games, I yeah. know. But anyway, talk a little bit about your staff, and we're going to wrap that up. All right, we've got uh, we've elevated our uh, our head JV coach, Bernie West, is going to be our defensive oh, coordinator. Oh, I love Bernie. Bernie's going to be our defensive coordinator. And then yeah. we've got coaches. We're, we're trying to uh, get away from two platooning. We want to have uh, one platoon put our best 11 on the field at all times. So Bernie's also going to be working with the offensive line. Then our offensive coordinator is going to be uh, Ron Johnson coming over from uh, Phoebus. Right. And uh, good, that's, good a little, that's a little bit of a, of a power football uh, mentality, mentality there, yes, it is. which we're hoping that we can do. You know, I told, uh, I told the players and the coaches, if, if we can line up in the wishbone with two tight ends, and uh, against Gloucester and have some success, I'd be more than happy to do that and never put the ball in the air. Uh, as an old quarterback, that's hard to say. But, you know, play-action passes are, are a good thing. Uh, then my son, uh, Dorsey, he's coaching the uh, running backs and the outside linebackers. Um, Bernie's also working with the offensive line. Uh, Bernie's uh, stepson, Tim Smith, is back with us. He's going to be coaching the defensive line and assisting Bernie with the uh, – with the offensive line. Then David Porter is back with us. David's okay. going to be coaching the wide receivers. He teaches in the Nupa News school system and working with the uh, defensive back. Uh, new, to the, new to the staff be uh, Coach Lawson, Mike Lawson. He's going to work with the uh, safeties and work with our, our video 
cameras and stuff. And then uh, Roy Johnson, who worked with quarterbacks last year, is going to be working with uh, tight ends uh, mainly this year since uh, Coach Ron Johnson is going to be working with the quarterbacks right. as offensive uh, coordinators. And I'm going to be basically coordinating the kicking game, so I have something to do. <laughs> so, well, it sounds like you got a good staff. Got a good staff, and, you know, we try to uh, make sure we don't leave, leave any rock unturned. But by the same token, we just don't want to put in uh, – Put in hours to be putting in hours. Old Bear Bryant mentality where you're right. going to outwork somebody. Basically, that doesn't happen in this day and age. You've right. got to make sure you you have the relationships with the players, and you know you've got to adapt. You can't can't be totally hard nosed like you used to be. Right. You know, it's either my way or the highway it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming in. Glad to be here. I appreciate you having me. Uh, I want to thank you for tuning in to LSC and Sports Time. I want to thank my special guest, Bubba Hooker. I'm your host, Bob Hintz. Until next time. 